Wish you a good morning and welcome to Lighthouse this morning. If you are with us for the first time, you will get to know our church a little bit more. As you know, our theme this year is about the faithfulness of God. And this is really what we want to, to stress this morning. The foundation of our faith, of your faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. God speaks, and he spoke through his prophet, and then the last days he spoke through his son, Jesus Christ. And every word of God is pure. It's been tested, it's been proven, and this is what we want to stress this morning to all of you so that you can look back into your year and see that God has been faithful to you. You're still here? Amen. Amen. Still have money in your pocket? Yes. God has answered many of our prayers this year, and He is, he is with us. Amen. We need a certainty in our life. We need something that is dependable, and uh, we know that this world is very shaky, but this morning, we want to repeat it again and say it with me this morning. If you believe it with your heart, God keeps every promise He makes. So, God keeps every promise He makes. First, God keeps every promise. It's from the Good News Bible. The easy to read version says, You can trust this. Every word that God speaks is true. God is a safe place for those who go to Him. And the King James says, Every word of God is pure. Actually, the original word is, is pure. We, we make it like it is trustworthy. It is for certain. Uh, God keeps every promise, but it is pure in the sense that it has been melted. It's been mer uh, uh, purged by fire. And it's a picture taken from the Old Testament of purifying uh, metals. So every word that you read in the Bible, every inspired prophetic utterance that you have is without any impurity. Whatever trials or tests that the Word of God is put to, it doesn't matter. It's not going to change the Word of God. It's going to come true. God's going to come true. And it says He is a shield. This is the, the term that He has used. It's a very interesting word. He is a shield. It is like a, a crocodile hide. That, that's what it makes. Like it's so hard. You cannot just pierce through that. It's like a shield that is made that is impossible to, to, to break. For those who run to, to God. For those who take refuge in the word of God. When, when you don't know where to turn. When you don't know anything else. When you tried everything that is humanly possible. When you come at the end of your resources. Run to the safety and to the refuge. Find your peace there. Find your refuge in that fact, this certainty. God is dependable. He will take you through. And if you notice today, many things that you have heard, the, the readings, the songs, they are pointing to the future. Amen. You and I, we have a future. And we, we certainly do. You know, people in this world, they, they laugh at us, Christian, and they say that if you believe in Jesus, it's like you're weak because you, religion is like a crutch. But let me say something about it. It's more than a crutch. Than a crutch. It's, it's a solid rock that is under our feet. It's not a, a crutch. And you know, when they say that we have a crutch, they have their own crutch. It's a different crutch. They use their, their self. They use their money, they use their knowledge, they use their human potential. And the difference between their crutch and our crutch is that our crutch is going to stand any test and their crutch is going to fail and crumble when they will need it. Because they have the other crutch is not, is not like ours, it's not dependable. If they trust on their own abilities, they are going to fail. So this morning, we stand so privileged this morning. We have to praise God, and we have to rejoice in the Lord. And this promise, uh, Paul says it this way, For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord. We declare to you by a word from the Lord that we who are alive, 
we are, we who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of a command with the voice of an archangel and with the sound of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. And then, the good news, more good news, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and we so all, will always be with the Lord. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord. And the Lord keeps every promises He makes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I want to talk with you for just a, not for a long time this morning. Um, I, I don't know if I we can't call it really a sermon. Uh, I just want to bring a devotion for us this morning. We're doing both. You've heard from Pastor Renee already this morning. And um, I want to share a little bit as well what God has, has put on my heart. Uh, as we look at this group and as we celebrate the anniversary this morning, I want to ask something. We, uh, uh, Sorry, ushers who are standing back there waiting for the offering. The offering will come at the end of the service today, so you can sit down. <laughs> okay. They're back there waiting. They're just waiting. We haven't forgotten. You're waiting for that. You can just, uh, you can just sit down. Um, and you can enjoy the service. Thanks for, thanks for serving us and for ministering to, to the whole body this morning. We appreciate it. As we, as we celebrate um, our, the anniversary this morning, the 23rd anniversary, I'd ask a question, and I think there may just be two or three people, but how many in this group were part of Lighthouse pretty much from the very, very beginning? Almost from the beginning. Wave your hand. Okay, look, ar look around just a minute, okay? Look around, just keep your hands up just a minute. It gives us a, now Kathleen's raising her hand, but she doesn't even remember it because she was just a, <laughs> how, she was eight, you remember it, okay? Andreas was part of it as well, Sister Gurley, Sister Josie, and, and just a few. So some of the things, as we celebrate the 23rd anniversary, uh, some of th those who've raised your hands, you, if you were around, you remember all You've been here for all 23 anniversaries that, um, that we have celebrated. Wow, you've really been through it. Um, and uh, I was not here when the church began. I was in, I was in China. I was in northern China uh, teaching, and I had gone to China, as, as many of you know, in 1986, uh, even before my parents had come to Hong Kong and even before uh, my brother had come. So I was in China. And uh, a year after that or so, my brother came here to Hong Kong, and then after that, my parents came as well. And God gave promises to people who were here in Hong Kong before there was a lighthouse, before there was a church here. God gave his promises. People weren't looking for his promises. People weren't trying to dig in the Word of God and to find something, but people were following God, serving God, walking faithfully with God, and in faith, listening for His voice, and God gave promises to people who were here, to people who were living faithfully, to people who were living sacrificially, to people who were giving of themselves and the little bit that they had for God and for His purposes. And God began to give promises to the people who were walking with Him. Brothers and sisters, what God has put on my heart this morning to encourage you with and to share, share with you is this. You don't have to go digging in the Bible for promises. It is good to know the Word of God, and we should know the Word of God. But follow God. Walk with Him faithfully, and as you walk with God, God Himself, God the Holy Spirit, will open His Word to you, and will reveal to you, and will give to you promises from His Word that He breathes into your life for your situation, just as He did before this church ever began. 
because we read this morning in Jeremiah 29 and then the verse that came after that that Joshua that Joshua read that God has plans for us and then one of the other verses was God will fulfill his plan for me and God has a plan for your life you may know part of it you may know a small part or you may have your own plan. You may be thinking, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to do. And it's good to have plans, and it's good to prepare and to look ahead. But it is better to look to God and to say, God, what are your plans for me? And if you've made some plans for your life, and if you're organizing things, I want to challenge you this morning to come again to God with your life with your future, with your plans, with all the problems and the difficulties that are associated with that, and come to Him and submit it again to Him this morning and say, God, here it is. I submit it to You. Lord, does my life fit with the plans that You have for me? Lord, are my plans, are these things that I'm working on, are they in line with you and your plans for me? Because if God makes the plan and God builds the house, it will succeed. It will stand. But if we are doing it on our own and depending on our own planning and our own effort and our own strength, we will wear ourselves out. And in the long run, we will fail. And so here at Lighthouse, God began to give his promises to people who were looking to him and who were committed to him. One of the promises that God gave, one of the words that God gave, and some of us know this already, some, this is, to, to you, this is new. Someone who was, and Pastor Renee will remember the story, I think, a little bit better than I do, that there was someone that was here in Hong Kong, not even someone who was permanent or long-term in Hong Kong, but somebody who had come for short-term ministry, I think carrying Bibles or something like that for just a few weeks or for a short time, and they were walking uh, through Jim Sa here along Nathan Road, and they were praying. And God spoke a word and said, I will raise up a lighthouse in this place. That's a promise from God. That's a word from God. And they didn't go trumpeting it around and saying, oh, there's this, God told me this, let's start doing something, let's build a church. This was a person who was here short term, short time. But then there were other people who were here. Some of you were here. My parents were here. Some of the missionaries were here. My brother was here. And as they prayed, and as they sought the Lord, and as they walked faithfully, God gave another promise. And God keeps every promise he makes. And this one was, I believe, to my mother as they were praying and looking ahead. Because by this time, the church was a church, Lighthouse was a church without a building and without a permanent address. And they were renting here. And then they were renting for a while at Guangdong Hotel. And then for, they were renting for a while at the YMCA down, uh, down on the, uh, in Salisbury, all the way down, I think, down on the tip. And, and then there would people, people would come in to visit and they would say, I couldn't find you this time. And that's because Lighthouse had been kicked out of this hotel or that hotel because they needed it for a banquet or for a this or for a that. And they would find some other place. And those of you who were here, I was not, but Brother XP, you were and others were. You remember those Sunday mornings when you'd have to bring the amplifiers, right? And all the instruments and you'd have to take them from wherever and bring them to the place and set up. And then at the end of the service, tear it down again. And then God gave a promise. And the promise was this. And it was from 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 10. And this was the, wor this was the word that God, that God gave. It was God's promise. And I think he gave it to, to my mom as she was praying. And she and dad were here. And this was the promise. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own 
and no longer be disturbed. This is the New Living Translation. Uh, can you give us the? Can you give me the? Give us the NIV just a minute. Let's look at it again in the NIV. I'll provide a place. Now this was the word of God through Samuel. For uh, for David, as the as the people of Israel were looking were were wanting to be established, and this was God's word to them, but God the Holy Spirit breathed new life and new direction into His word for the people of Lighthouse who were here at the time and were going here and going there and being kicked out. And a lot of you don't know it because you know we look around and I think we're pretty nice people who would not like us, you know. Why would we have any enemies? But do you know, in the early days of Lighthouse, and some of you who are here would remember that, do you know that there was a fair bit of opposition to the church, to Lighthouse being established? Do you, I won't give you any names at all, but do you know that there were other churches that said, why do you need an English-speaking church? You don't need such a church. We don't need something like that in Hong Kong. There were other church groups, and there were other... Christian other church leaders. I don't know if I'll call them Christian very much, but there were other church leaders who who actually said to some of the hotels, don't rent to that group. Now, I look at us and I think we're really nice. Why would anybody do that to us? But there will always be in any church that is of God, in any life that is for God, there will be the opposition of those who are not flowing with the plan of God. Make sure that you are always flowing with the plan of God. Don't oppose what God is doing. Don't tear down what God is building. Flow with God because God is going to accomplish His purposes. And so God gave this promise and because it came from God, the people that were here accepted it and received it. And they said, okay, God, you're going to give us a home. And it was very shortly after that that the people who were the nucleus of Lighthouse came to this place and in faith bought this, borrowed a huge sum of money from the bank because God gave his word because God gave his word, and God keeps every promise he makes. But brothers and sisters, this morning, I don't want us just to look back at the past. And this is the other strong point that God has put on my heart. Some of us this morning, as I share this, you're thinking, I don't even remember that. I wasn't here. I'm not part of that, but I'm part of the church now. And so our challenge this morning as we celebrate the 23rd anniversary and as we look at this and as we think to the past, we look to the past and there are those who sacrificed for the foundation of this church. There are those who gave their life savings and their retirement for the building and the purchasing of this church. There are those who gave hours upon hours upon hours for the setting up and the founding of this church. There were those who prayed and prayed and prayed because we can give and we can work, but until we pray, God's work will not be built and God's work will not be accomplished. It will always be done through prayer, and that's the only lasting work of God that will endure, that come, it comes through prayer, and it comes through sacrificial prayer. And brothers and sisters, it will take more than a five-minute prayer on Sunday morning or one or two minutes throughout the week to build the things of God and to build on the foundation that has been laid. And so if we only look at the past this morning, then we'll just be nostalgic. And we'll just say, well, wasn't that great? Wow, I wish I could have been here in those early days. And I kind of wish that as well. I wish I could have been here. But my challenge to you is this. Those of you who were here, we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus for your sacrifice 
and for your foundation laying because that is hard work. But the challenge to every one of us now and today is that was for that generation. What about our generation? What about us today? What are we doing to continue building upon the foundation that has laid? What are our prayers being invested in? Do we have any prayers that are being invested? Or are our prayers focused on, oh, I need this, I've got a problem. Pray when there's a problem, we do pray. But are most of our prayers just focused, me and my. God will answer those prayers, but brothers and sisters, God wants us to be part of and involved in and working towards and sacrificing for and praying towards something that is bigger than ourselves. Something that is bigger than just what touches me and my family and my loved one and what I have and what's on my heart. God's kingdom is a great kingdom and he wants us to be part of it. And so my challenge to you as we celebrate this 23rd anniversary is, what are you doing in this church? Not because I'm saying, oh, come build Lighthouse. That is not what we mean. You know that this church, Lighthouse, is involved in building in many areas, is involved in God's work and in God's ministry in China, in many places in the Philippines, here in Hong Kong in various things, because we want to build the work of God wherever it is and God has called us here and God works through this and my challenge to you in the Lord this morning is what are you doing in your life what are you working towards in your life what are you praying towards in your life that is bigger than you what are you involved in that without God's help would be impossible in your life this morning let me ask that again what is going on in your life? What are you involved in in your life that without God's help, it would be impossible? If you cannot answer something in answer to that question, if you say, well, nothing really, well, I'm praying for me, I hope I whatever, then your God is too small and your faith is too small and your investment is too small. God is a big God. God has things that he wants to do in Lighthouse. We don't want to just look at the past and say, wow, that was so good and that was so great. God has steps of faith for you today. God has something for you that he wants you to step out of the boat to step into the darkness that you don't see and let him shine his light on that step that you're taking because he has given you a promise. This is God's challenge to us as we celebrate this 23rd anniversary. So we don't want to just look back. We've looked back at this last year and we wanted to do that as a reminder of this is, how, this is where God has brought us. But if we only look at the past when we celebrate an anniversary, then we're, we're doing just what the world does. That's how the world celebrates anniversaries. Oh, this happened and that happened. But we are not people of this world. We are citizens of heaven. And God has more for us ahead. What are you doing? How are you praying? How are you sacrificing? Is it bigger than yourself? It should be because God is a big God. And God keeps every promise that he makes. And this morning, if you say, well, I don't really have a promise from God, then my challenge to you is this. Don't just go to God's word and say, oh, let me go find a promise. That's not the way. <laughs> but instead, go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer and say, God, put your word in my heart. Put your word in my heart. God, you speak to me. Lord, may what I build, may what I sacrifice, may what I invest in prayer build your kingdom and fulfill your plans for me, for my family, for this church in my generation. And then, should the Lord tarry years down the road, when Pastor Renee is all 
gold and gray. <laughs> and back in Canada. And Pastor Jennifer is old and gray. I'm already gray. And back in the U.S., if Jesus tarries, it won't matter that we are gone because there will still be a generation here that knows God and walks in faith and God will have his word for a new generation. Let us be part of what God is doing. Let us have the promises of God burning like a fire in our hearts, fueled by faith. Let us go on in God. Amen. 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 That we had a gift. It's not a million dollar gift. <laughs> it's more like a symbolic gift than, than a super value, value the, you know, in terms of, of money and materials. But just as we follow from the message that we just heard, like your role, your devotion, your commitment, your heart response to God's um, uh, dependability is his word, his truthfulness, and his faithfulness to you. So what is your faithfulness through him? So we thought that as we are going to uh, let you come and take, receive your gift this morning, that it would not be just, okay, grab a little uh, keychain and, and go. Uh, by the way, this is a as I say. But it's a very nice keychain, Pastor. <laughs> yes. It has a nice word on it. Our, our team is on it this year, so something is very nice. So. <laughs> so well, we would like you. Whoa. It's so heavy. As you come to take it, that it would be like some kind of a heart desire, a heart response, Lord God, I really want to be part of what you are doing, of what you are, what you are about to do in this world. And I want to be part, I want to be used by God, I want to be found faithful. So in, in this atmosphere of your heart, you come and take this one, and it's your prayer. You take it, it's your commitment. It's, a, it's kind of a promise to God. By your grace, God, I take it, I receive it, but I, will, I want to be found faithful. So if you want, let us stand. Let's pray first, and then you, 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 you come. And as you are ready, as we pray, you just come, take it, and make it like a personal prayer or commitment to the Lord. Will you? And you can then, and, and as you're coming forward, just pray. You can be praying out loud as we're, as we're praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, this morning we thank you that you are such a God, a truthful God. Hallelujah. A loyal God, a faithful God. Hallelujah. Thank you that we have enjoyed and we keep enjoying your faithfulness, Lord. Even when we are completely selfish, when we are completely unaware, when we are disconnected with you, and when we, even when we are unfaithful, your word says you remain faithful because you cannot not be faithful. And Lord, as we realize it again afresh this morning, and Lord, that you have brought us to be part of a church family. And we heard some of the history of the, of the church this morning. Lord, we want to stand on our feet, raise our hands, open our hearts, and say, Lord, use me. I'm yours. And I'm part of the church that where you have led me to. And Lord Jesus, I want to be part of this actual generation and of the future generation. Those who will continue to build the kingdom of God through the vision and the faith and the tools that are provided to us by you, Lord, and the, and the Lighthouse Church. And Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, I commit myself. I thank you for your faithfulness. And I want to pledge my faithfulness to you as well. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You can come when you're ready. Don't be shy. Everybody is welcome. Everyone's welcome. Even if you're visiting with us here today, you're welcome. God bless you, Lord. Lord, bless the people of us. Lord, may your blessings be upon them. Establish your word in their hearts. Lord, give them the path ahead for them. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, show them your plan for their lives. Hallelujah. Give them your vision for the future. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Accomplish your purposes in their lives, the things that you have wanted to do, Lord, that have not yet been accomplished in them and through them. Do it, O oh Lord. Do it, O oh Lord. We wait on you. We look to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Bless your church, O oh yes, Lord God. God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. But we're not look, only looking Strength back, but we are looking Hallelujah. forward, Lord. Yes, this year, 2014, 2015. Hallelujah. Bless your church, Lord God. Hallelujah. Lead us and make us more fruitful. 